Hello everyone and welcome to my Adobe After Effects project. In this video, I just want to quickly show you how can you create rings inside Adobe After Effects. Now, this may not really seem something very cool or exciting, but this I think can serve as a very good motion background. So say when you are creating templates or when you are creating some very good uh, intro titles and sequences and you want something that can really go, uh, make a good background that can you know animate in the background and can basically fill up the background I think this kind of thing uh, is perfect for you. So let's take a look at what do we have here. So you can see right now we, we're doing nothing but just creating normal rings. You can see they just come out. We have applied a glow, a ramp effect and everything kind of looks good. So this is how, uh, I mean, this is what I'm going to show you in this video. So if you're interested, please follow along. And if not, then uh, please move on to some other tutorial. Okay. Anyways, um, but yeah, uh, in creating this, I have around, I have at least created around three pre -coms. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that this may take you a little time, but uh, in the end you will have something very, very nice. Okay, so um, let's record and yeah, let's get started. I'm gonna create a new composition, Comp2. I'm just gonna use the PAL DV uh, white screen square pixel. I'll keep this black and I'm gonna change the duration to around um, 10, or actually, ah, sorry, 10. 10 10 seconds click ok and now I'm gonna take this um, my shape tool I'm gonna take my ellipse tool now there is this one tutorial on YouTube which says energy blast or something and you know uh, that guy has done a great uh, you know a great job of creating that you know that wave kind of effect and I watched this tutorial a long time back and I was like you know the, the way he created that um, you know that that circle or the, or the basic ring effect was not really you know the, the most efficient way what he did was he I, I think he made a, co a a solid okay a full big square solid and then he just masked out a circle now that can work of course like I said it was a great tutorial go ahead and watch it uh, but I'm gonna use a different trick um, you're gonna create this solid okay and by the way I can be wrong he may have done something else <laughs> he may have done something else I'm just you know saying trash about him but uh, that was overall a good video so um, yeah yeah uh, anyways uh, we're just gonna create um, an ellipse I'm gonna duplicate this I'm just gonna make the second ellipse come down a little so you can see right now you can see that you know in the end when when this circle is masked out you will get a, like a little boundary and that's good I'm gonna change my track mat and by the way if, if you don't see the track mat you can just do a right click over here go to columns and go to um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I think you should go to take switches. No, not not switches. Um, go to, go to AV. No, not AV feature either. Um, take label. Nah, not that. Okay, take modes definitely. Yeah, modes. Yeah, so I almost closed everything. I'm just gonna bring all of these back by clicking on these two buttons right here. And, and make sure that you have your track mat on. Okay, and change this below layer from track mat. Change from none to change it to alpha inverted mat. And when you do this, you will see that you get a hollow circle. Now, right now, if I was to create a new solid, you can see that we actually have a hole, you know, in this circle. Wait a sec, I'll just change the color. Um, so right now you can see, if I was to change this, we can actually see through the circle and therefore we'll get a perfect rings effect. I'm just gonna cancel that. Okay. Uh, and by the way, it's a good idea if if you are using this for a motion background, it's good if you do not use this um, this solid layer because you know you have to place this on some other layer and then you'll be like you know that you're getting a full black screen with only circles. So in order to like you know in order to get that alpha, you can just remove the solid and uh, you can only work with alpha. You can just turn this grid off and you'll get a perfect background uh, for you to work and it's also not affecting the alpha. So you know I think that's good. Anyways, uh. Now I'm going to pre comp or actually wait, we have just created the basic rig. We have to animate this. So I'm going to take my shape layer two. I'm going to take, I'm going to parent it to my shape layer one. And actually let's just rename. I'm going to call it the main, main ellipse. Wait, what the hell is the spelling? I forgot. A L E L L I P S E. E L L I P S E. Main ellipse and Ah. Okay, 
So we have got these two things done now. Now we can just uh, take the main ellipse scale property. Let me just animate that. I'm gonna take the first value to straight to zero. I'm gonna come to say around like say one second. I'm just gonna do a reset. Or actually, you know, we, we don't want to do a reset. We just want, we want this whole circle to go out of the screen. So what you're gonna do is we're going to uh, scale this up to a very high number, say around um, 350 like to a, to a number which basically sends the ellipse out of the screen that's exactly what we want to do so now if we play you can see this it comes and then it goes off now I'm going to pre-compose this control shift C make sure that the layers are selected and then press control shift C and I'm just gonna say rings 0 1 so I have this pre-composition now and uh, I can just duplicate this and just offset the timing okay, like this um, so basically when it gets to this part we can have another like you know um, circle come out and that's the best thing now you can actually time it up properly like say shift page down shift like you know 10 frames should bring in another ellipse like that you can time it up shift page down shift page down and so it's all properly timed up it creates great motion backgrounds i think this is a little too fast i'm just gonna move it 20 frames ahead now one two one two okay and uh actually now this is a little too slow i'm gonna go for 15 seconds but you can try out okay and you can actually have some random timing also Shift page down, one, two, three, four, five. Shift page down, one, two, three, four, five. And like this, we have like, you know, I think a good timing. Right. Uh, now, if you were to go inside one of the rings and enable motion blur, you would see that you get a very, like, you know, and, and yeah, make sure that you, when you are enabling this, come back to your main comp two and enable the motion blur for the composition you know, in order to apply the motion blur effect on these layers. And when you do, you will see that you get this one, you know, very nice blur hollow effect. And uh, that's exactly what we were looking for. We were actu actually, you know, when I was making this effect, I, I had to like, you know, use my head, man, for creating this basic thing. I was really having a hard time, you know, creating just this, this basic circle. I was trying mask and I was trying, uh, you know, all these different modes and, you know, transfer modes and nothing was working. And then I, you know, I had this uh, idea of using the, the alpha inverted mat. Anyways, um, we want to go for the glow effect now and make sure that you are doing, and actually, you know what, you can pre-compose all of these rings to control shift C. I'm going to call this main ring and apply all the effects to this main ring. So what happens is you get only like you know one layer to keep track of and you know to apply all your effects to so that makes your work a little better and a lot faster so glow uh type in glow in effects and presets take it and drop it onto the main ring and you can see that we get that glow effect now if you want to apply the ramp effect the way i did in this uh video you can um just go and apply the ramp to the main rings because if you were to take in like, you know, if you were to apply it to this main ring pre-composition, then it won't affect the rings. It will just change uh, the RAM properties of the entire layer. What the hell? Ah, so right now you can see that it's not affecting the rings. It's actually, you know, affecting the whole thing. So uh, that's not looking good. I'm going to take and ramp. I'm going to apply it to these two layers. Uh, actually, the only the main ellipse that I think should be fine. I'm just going to change it to a very nice red. I mean the start color to a very nice big red I'm gonna take the end color to a nice yellow click okay that's good recomposition no, this is the one and now you can just uh, duplicate this main ring and change the transfer mode to overlay and I think you'll get a very interesting different effect so these look really really nice I think the, the rings are a little fat now, if you want to do any changes to the ring to uh, as to the size or, you know, to the position, you can always go back to the main rings folder, you know, where you have your main two ellipses and do the changes right there. And it will affect all the ellipses that you have made. So I think that's kind of good. You just want to change the size of this uh, second ellipse of the small ellipse till it like, you know, makes the boundary of our, uh, you know, of, of, of our ring very, very thin. 
So once again, it was a very basic tutorial and you know, um, nothing great in this video, but I really wanted to show you how can you, you know, create some very nice motion backgrounds. Okay, and if, if you're getting all these hard edges till now and you don't want them, then you can just type in Gaussian Blur. Um, Gaussian, Gaussian, Gaussian Blur. Take it and drop it onto the layer. Change it to say around five. Control C and Control V. Like that, you get like you know a very soft edge. And if you don't want the soft edge, then of course you can just remove these uh, Gaussian Blur and uh, and you know switch off the motion blur. Like that, you'll get you know this kind of effect. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you understood. I hope you liked it. Please subscribe to Tutorials for Graphics. My name is TJ Style and I will see you all in my next video. Thank you friends and take care.